So hopefully you had some success if you've done the beginning of this, uh, this section 4.2 uh, with negative exponents. The big thing that gets introduced here is negative exponents. But we have to remember some of the things that you know from grade 9 and just add in the concept of negative exponents. So remembering um, these exponent laws that you learned last year. Uh, exponent laws for product of two numbers, quotient of two numbers, and power of a power. And then this sounds sort of the same here, but exponent laws for power of products and quotient. And it'll make some more sense when we look down below. But here's a new one is uh, negative exponents. In theory, you should know what zero exponent means from, uh, from last year. But uh, ne what negative exponents mean. All right, so let's uh, go down below here a little bit and look at some of the ones you already know or hopefully know. If you haven't filled in this yet, maybe you want to fill it in here. You have two powers that you're multiplying together. You actually learned this a long time ago when you were in elementary school and you learned that, say, if you multiply it 100 times 1,000, you just learned a shortcut for what the answer is. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence here, but I'm trying to relate it to something that you know. You, what was the shortcut for that? If you, if you were in grade 3 or 4 or whenever you learned how to do this, whenever you learned the shortcut, what's 100 times 1,000? 100,000? You probably just learned, well, you just put all the zeros there. If there's two zeros here and three zeros here, there's five zeros there. That's this rule here, right? Because in grade 9, you wouldn't write it as 100 and 1,000. Well, you would, but you'd think of this as 10 to the 2 and 10 to the 3. If you have 10 to the 2 and 10 to the 3, that's the same as 10 to the 5, right? If you're multiplying two powers with the same base, they're both 10 here, you just add the exponents, right? So this is going to be a to the m plus n. For some reason, when there's an actual number there, if somebody says 2 to the 3 times 2 to the 5, a lot of times people will write this as, they'll get this right, they'll get the exponent right, but what do you think they'll mistakenly put as the base? They'll mistakenly put 4. It's not 4, right? If you have 2 to the 3, 2 to the 5, it's 2 to the 8, right? If you wrote it out the long way, there's three of these here, there's five of these here. Altogether, you have eight of them. You don't suddenly have eight fours, you have eight twos. Anyways, I'm assuming you're okay with that from last year. Same thing here when you're dividing. Instead of adding exponents, you are subtracting exponents. Okay, for the same reason. If you have two to the sixth divided by two to the three, if you have six of them on the top here, and you have three of them on the bottom. Well, when you're dividing, it's each of those are going to divide, kind of cancel out, divide to one, and you're left with three of them there, right? So this is two to the three. Subtract those exponents. If you have a power of a power, say you have two to the three to the four. Two to the three to the four, you could write as two to the three times itself four times. And then you can just use this first rule, right? If you have 2 to the 3 to the 4, if you have 4 of those things there, that's going to be 2 to the 12. Right? So the shortcut is if you have a power of a power, you just multiply those exponents. So there's a to the m, n if you're writing it like that. Now the other ones that set up above power of a product or power of a quotient if you have in brackets here, this is a tough one in grade 9 because we tend to miss out on this. If this says 2x to the third, a lot of times grade 9s will just write that as 2x to the third. What's the difference between this and this in terms of what that 3, that exponent power of 3 applies to? What's the difference? This one, the 3 only applies to the x without brackets, but this one... It applies to both. Are these things equal? I've got an equal sign in there. Are they the same? They're definitely not the same, right? 2x to the, to the third, all to the third like that, it's not equal to 2x to the third without the brackets. What's it going to be equal to? It's like 2x times 2x times 2x. The x to the third part's right, but what's the coefficient going to be in front? 2 times 2 times 2, it's going to be 8, right? If you have something all to the power of something like that, you got to multiply each of those things. So if you have a, b all to the power of m, it's going to be the same as if you have a to the m and b to the m, both of those things. 
And the same goes for here. If you have a fraction to a power, if you have two-thirds and you're squaring that, it's both of those things squared. It's two squared is four, three squared is nine. So it's like a to the m, b to the m. And the last one that you touch on in grade nine is this zero exponent. But it's tied right in with negative exponents, which you didn't look at in grade nine. We should probably look at a pattern for that because I think that's the simplest way to see what negative exponents are. Negative exponents are a pretty tough concept. Once you get it, they're not so tough. But it, if you look at a pattern here, let's just uh, let's stick with powers of two because that is probably the easiest thing. Make some space. So when you first learn about powers, uh, two to the third. What's two to the third equal to? Eight, right? And if we just if we keep counting down by one over here, so I'm going to go two to the third, two to the second, two to the first. And we're going to just keep following that side down. And then we're going to try and use the pattern to see what each of these should be equal to. 2 to the third is 8. 2 to the second is 2 times 2, 4, right? Now, I'm actually going to put one thing in the middle, which is what it's written, what it is in expanded form. You did this hopefully in the activity that you've already done at the beginning of this section. But if you haven't done it, then I guess you have to think about it here. Three twos there. Here you have two twos. Here you have one two. If we continue down here, what's happening each time with these numbers as you go down the list? You got eight, four, two. What should the next number be just if you're following the pattern? It should definitely be one, right? Now I could have done this with any base here. I use two just because it's easiest to work with. But I could have done it with any base Right, if I had had threes, right, if I had three cubed, it would have been 27. If I had three squared is nine, three to the one is three. Three to the zero should also be equal to, what should it be equal to? One. Anything to the zero power is, is one, no matter what base you're using. All right, so if you, uh, if you want to go back up there and put that, anything to the zero power is one. As long as there's only one thing you could put here that would mess that rule up. So that's what this is. As long as A is not equal to, what would be the only thing that would mess that up? Um, no, 1 to the 0 would, would still be 1. If we wrote the pattern here. 1 cubed is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 to the 1 is 1. 1 to the 0 is 1. The only thing that wouldn't work there is if you had... If you had zero, what zero cubed is zero. Zero squared is zero. Zero to the one is zero. But zero to the zero, it sure looks from this like it should be zero, doesn't it? But it sure looks like from this, like this rule says anything to the zero power is one. But this pattern makes it look like anything to the zero power is zero. So the answer is it's undefined. Okay, if, if you have zero to the zero, it's... We don't know what it is because there's kind of two conflicting rules. So that's why this says here as long as this is not zero. All right? So that's, uh, that's that everything that hopefully you know from grade 9. But while we have that pattern down below, we're going to look at this, negative exponents. Because once you have this pattern started here, you can just continue the pattern. So we've got on this side, we're dividing numbers by 2 each time. So we should be able to figure out what goes next there. What should be the next thing on, in that pattern? 8, 4, 2, 1. You're dividing by 2 each time. What should be the next thing? Cut it in half again. A half, right? You put a half there. Or, of course, you could call it 0.5. Or 0 0.5. What should be the next thing there if you keep going? A quarter, 0.25, an eighth. 0.125. But what should it be on the other side here? What should this be? Let's get rid of all this zero stuff over here so we can see what's going on. What should this be called? What should this exponent be here? If you follow the pattern on this side, it should be, you got 3, 2, 1, 0. It should be negative 1, right? 
And then if you keep going, this should be 2 to the negative 2. Okay? This should be 2 to the negative 3. It's a tough one to get because when you see these negatives, it sure seems like the number should be negative, but it's not. The number's not negative. That exponent doesn't mean whether the number is positive or negative. Just like when you learned this, you learned you don't actually you don't multiply by three. There's no three in what you're doing. It's just saying how many twos are there, right? This exponent means how many how many of this base do you have, right? Here you have three of them. Here you have two of them. One. Here you have none of them, right? You're not multiplying by any twos. When you don't multiply anything, it's like multiplying by one, right? This could all be 1 times 2 3 times. It could be 1 times 2 twice. This could be 1 times 2 once. This could be 1 times you don't multiply by anything. You just leave it. When you have 2 to the negative 1, not only is it not multiplying by 2, it's like you're, you're in debt for 1 almost, right? Negatives are like being in debt. Not only do you not multiply by a 2, but you do the opposite of multiplying by 2, which is dividing by 2. Okay? Okay? And then this one, you're in debt for two of them, right? Like you're, you, you're dividing by two twice. You're not multiplying by two twice. You're dividing by two twice. It's doing the opposite operation. This is one over two. You've got three of them here. So there's, there's a parallel there. Two to the negative three is related to... Let's see if I can fit them both on here, almost. Two to the negative three is related to two to the positive three down here. 2 to the negative 2, sorry, 2 to the positive 2, 2 to the negative 2, they're related. Okay, if you look at these two numbers here, you have 4 and a quarter. Those are matched up, right? 2 to the 2 and 2 to the negative 2. They're reciprocals of each other. Let's get rid of all the rest of the highlighting here and the circling. These are related. 2 to the 1, 2 to the negative 1. They're reciprocals of each other, 2 and 1 over 2. And then the third one here, 2 to the 3, 2 to the negative 3, 1 8 and 8. Those are related to each other. If we continued the pattern up here, uh, if I put one up above here and put dot, 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 2 to the 7 would be some number here that we don't care about. But we could, um, we could see what it's going to be matched up with, which one would it be matched up with down here? 2 to the 7 is going to be the reciprocal of what number down here, dot, dot, dot. What's it going to be, this, what's it going to be connected to? 2 to the negative 7, right? So if we know what 2 to the 7 is, which you can, you know, you can multiply out. If you've got 7 2s here, I don't know if you know your powers of 2. In today's world with computers and everything and um, all of that, you should know your powers of 2, but if you don't happen to know that, you can kind of start from maybe the one you know. You got 2, 4, 6, or 2, 4, 6, <laughs> 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. If you know that 2 to the 7 is 128, what's 2 to the negative 7 going to be equal to? Not a negative number, it's going to be equal to 1 over 128. It's going to be equal to whatever 1 over 2 to the 7 is. Okay? This is the rule that we're going to write up above. 2 to the negative 7 is equal to the reciprocal of 2 to the positive 7. Right? If we have any number here, if we continue this down. 2 to the negative n, what's it going to be equal to? Even if we don't know what n is, it's going to be equal to 1 over 2 to the positive n. Okay, that's the rule that you, that you write up above. There's a bunch of different ways you could write this. Okay, but that's one of the ways. Let's go back up to that list. <clears throat> a to the negative n. Some number to the negative n is the same as whatever a to the positive n is. It's 1 over that. As long as, again, a is not zero. Or you could write it like this. 1 over a to the n. You could do it either way. <clears throat> if you already have a negative number, a ne sorry, a negative exponent on the bottom of a fraction... 
like we had, say, 2 to the negative 5 is equal to 1 over 2 to the 5. Or you could say it as, you could do it this way. You could say, if I have 2 to the negative 5, it's the same as the reciprocal of 2, a half, to the positive 5. You can write it either way. You can change it to a positive exponent as long as you have the reciprocal as the base. All right? If you already have a negative exponent, if you have, make some more space close by here. If you already have one over two to the negative five, what do you think that's gonna be the same as? Well, when you had a, when you had a negative exponent like that, it ended up on the bottom of a fraction as a positive exponent. If you have a negative exponent on the bottom of a fraction, what do you think that's going to be equal to? Well, if you don't trust me, you want to maybe trust your calculator? Oops. No, I do not want to update that now. 1 divided by 2 to the power of negative 5. What do you think it's going to be equal to? Just equal to 32, right? It's equal to 2 to the positive 5. 2 to the positive 5. If you have a negative exponent on the bottom of a fraction, it's the same as a positive exponent on top. If you have a negative exponent on kind of the top, it's the same as a positive on the bottom. So let's write that one down here. This is a to the n. <clears throat> Now you can combine it with any other, there's probably one other thing that we should put that's not here. If you have a over b to the negative n, so you can add this one in. Fraction like two thirds, and you have an expo a negative exponent. What would it be if it was a positive exponent? Two thirds squared? is like 2 squared over 3 squared, 4 over 9. What do you think 2 thirds to the negative 2 is? If you make that negative, what's it gonna, what's gonna happen? If you have something to a negative exponent, so if you've got this to a negative exponent, it's gonna be the same as the reciprocal of that, 3 halves to the positive 2. Okay, if you have a negative exponent, it's the same as the reciprocal with a positive exponent. This is one of the one of the most kind of theoretical toughest things here in this whole chapter or unit. Okay, so um, there's some examples here to uh, to work on. Of course, it'd be good if you did. I'm not sure if you've done them yet. You can use a textbook to follow along. Um, I'll probably go over them at some point. Not right now. So can you get going on things? Ask questions if you need to, want to.